Hi and welcome to Orbit. The entire smartphone market went down last year by 18% and Motorola actually went up by about 18% and I can see why. Their smartphones have been awesome lately and the Edge 40 Pro is their newest flagship. I tested it for two weeks. The design might not look like much at first, but it feels incredibly good. The device is softly rounded in every respect and especially today when everything is getting more and more boxy, that is a positive. It makes the Edge 40 Pro look smaller and thinner than it actually is. Much more ergonomic than what you find with most of the competition right now. The aluminium frame is matte, the Gorilla Glass Victus is matte and the camera element only sticks out very softly. These three points combined ensure that the Moto Edge 40 Pro always looks nice and clean and does not collect dust anywhere. I like how Motorola hides the text that other smartphones have on their back on the aluminium frame. You can hardly even see it. The build quality is also on the highest level and the IP68 water protection underlines that. I can only say good things about the design, the vibration motor and the stereo speakers. And there's even a decent case included in the box. And it continues great on the front. Over 90% is display because the bezels are ultra thin and look symmetrical. The Edge 40 Pro feels more compact than other 6.7 inch devices and the glass is subtly rounded on all sides which is great because swiping from the top, left and right feels pleasantly smooth. It almost runs across the front like a dome, which reminds me of the Apple and Pixel Watch. Motorola decided to use Full HD Plus instead of Quad HD Plus to achieve a record refresh rate, 165 Hz. Yes, after 60, 90, 120 and 144 Hz, we are now at 165 Hz. And as much as I love high refresh rates, no one will really notice the difference between 144 and 165 Hz. I mean, sure, it's actually smoother and you can notice the difference from 120 Hz, but you really need an eye for it. Despite the adaptive mode can only switch between 1 and 120 Hz, 165 Hz only awakes in the gaming mode and when you activate it permanently. And I had it permanently activated all the time because the battery life is so, so good. But more on that in just a bit. The display is so good, I actually have only two small criticisms. First, the fingerprint sensor is nothing special and it could be both faster, higher and bigger. Second, the brightness of 1300 nits peak is only slightly above average. But yes, the display is otherwise extremely good and I loved watching videos on it. Let's move on to the performance and software. This smartphone is the fastest smartphone I've ever used. That is first due to the hardware. A Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, 12 GB of RAM, 256 GB UFS 4.0 storage. Second, Motorola has done a sensational job with the software optimization. And third, it is the 165 Hz display and it just flies through apps and animation. Even after 20 minutes of continuous load, it only throttles by 34%. This is how I imagine the performance of a 2023 flagship and already after a few days, I found other smartphones a bit sluggish. Motorola is using pure Android and adds some useful features to it. There's the two times chop to activate the flashlight at any time and the two times twist for the camera. You can easily customize everything on the fly. And Ready4 turns the Edge 40 Pro with a monitor into a mini PC like Samsung DeX. And it is not Apple, not Samsung and not Google that has the best always on display. It is Motorola because theirs is pretty, customizable and interactive. I can quickly review all messages discreetly or control my music without even leaving the always on mode. This makes everything go faster and saves power. The Edge 40 Pro will get 3 years of Android and 4 years of security updates and with that great performance I think it will have a great long term performance and speaking of long term, the battery life is insane even though the battery is only 4,600 milliampere hours, while most of the competition has 5,000 milliampere hours. But Motorola outperforms them by far and I can only point that to the great software optimization. I usually had about 40% battery left in the evening with an average of four and a half hours of display use. That is easily seven to eight hours. I cannot empty it in one day. 
it's absolutely on par with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. That's why I had 165Hz activated at all times, because you only lose an hour at most. Charging is done via the included power adapter with 125W in 7 minutes to 50% and 21 minutes to 100%. I love ultra fast charging and that it has become standard at Motorola. While iPhone and Samsung users spend more than an hour at the airport trying to get a little bit of battery life somehow, you plug in the Edge 4 Pro and in only 10 minutes you have no worries. Wireless charging is supported with the usual 15 watt and reverse wireless charging with 5 watt. The triple camera on the back takes pictures that look like this. I want to say a few words about the tech behind it while you get an impression of the pictures. Both the main and the ultra wide angle sensor have 50 megapixel and they are already in the predecessor. The third camera is a 2x tele with a f1.6 aperture. Motorola calls it a portrait lens. It was already available in the Edge 30 Ultra. I always preach that main cameras nowadays are so good that a 2 times zoom can be done digitally, so I think a 3x tally is the minimum. So Motorola's camera is not exactly impressive in zooming in. The main camera is the best camera. The autofocus is remarkably fast and accurate and the color reproduction is even a bit more vivid than the 200 megapixels of the Moto Edge 30 Ultra. But compared to the Pixel 7 Pro, Motorola's images are less sharp and look over sharpened at the same time. With these fish, the shutter speed was too slow. I think for most people this passes as a decent camera, but it can't compete with the best of the best. The ultra wide angle is nice and wide and has an autofocus and macro mode. Color wise it matches the main camera, but the sharpness is worse. This becomes especially obvious when you are in bad lighting conditions. The selfie camera is okayish in terms of color, but it's too artificially sharpened. I see it like this. The camera is certainly not the reason why you buy this phone. And I can see why this is the reason that you don't buy this phone. For me, that is the case. But not everyone is a photographer or an influencer and I think for many people this camera is an improvement over the current one. Conclusion. Objectively. If you Exclude the camera for a moment. This is the best smartphone right now with the fastest performance, fastest screen, a great software, one of the fastest charging systems, one of the best battery lives. It feels great in hand. I do like Motorola's optimizations. Just a great phone. But you can't exclude the camera in a conclusion. And for 900 euros, this is not a cheap phone. It is cheap for the tech you get, but it is expensive for a phone with this type of camera. And I think the price will go down in time and then it will be a really great pick. But until then, it's hard to justify and I don't think that this phone is for everyone. But if you get it, if you accept the cons, you will totally love it. That's it for me. See you on the next one.